Hey YouTube, this is A Spinkter. Today we're going to talk about the citrus and try to unravel the mystery of FM synthesis and get to the bottom of how this matrix works and what the hell is happening with FM synthesis anyway and all the crazy mathematics behind it. Now, in order to do that, first we have to understand a few basic things about FM synthesis. Um, every FM synth that I've worked with, every good one anyway, has a matrix whether it looks like this with knobs or whether it has to do with a, a different graphical representation doesn't matter they all have to do with using certain waveforms to modulate other waveforms now these operators here all have a distinct waveform shape you can see down in the box could be a square could be a pulse could be a triangle or sawtooth doesn't matter what you have to understand about these is that they're not necessarily sounds all right they can be simply used to imprint a shape or a pattern into another sound without adding its own you know um, sign shape now uh, that's kinda confusing but I'll try to demonstrate it as best I can first what we'll do is we're gonna work with ring modulation now ring modulation affects the amplitude or the volume of a wave frequency modulation affects the pitch because pitch is frequency so um, this is Edison here. We're going to record on input, and we're going to listen to an unmodulated. Sorry, uh, let me unmodulate that. We're going to listen to an unmodulated sine wave in the key of C. Sounds like this. Yep, and that's pretty much what we'd expect to see. This is when we zoom in. We'll see that's the sine wave pattern. It looks identical to the pattern we see here in the operator one box. Now this matrix here, if you think of it as going from left to right, it makes a bit of sense. Uh, what this would indicate would be that operator 2 is affecting operator 1, but operator 2's individual sound is not actually going to come out. This would indicate that operator 3 is affecting operator 1, okay, from left to right. And this output right here is going to indicate that operator 1 is going to make its way to your speakers. All right. If I did this, this would indicate that operator 3 is going to make it to our speakers clean. If I did this, that indicates that operator 3 is going to be affected by operator 4 and that that output will go to our speakers. Get it? All right. So, back to our unmodified sine wave here. Whoops. Looks like this, sounds like that. What we're going to do here is do some basic ring modulation. I'm going to use a very slow sine wave to modulate the amplitude of our initial sine wave. And it sounds like this. Sorry. Sounds like this. Now that's a pretty, uh, pretty easy thing to see here. We can see that not only is it a sine wave up close, but when we zoom out, there's a very distinct sine wave pattern impressed upon it, right? Now let's do the same with a triangle. This is a triangle wave. And we can clearly see that a triangle shape emerges. With a sawtooth, we get a strange diamond shape. With a square, we get nothing. With a pulse, we get an occasional popping noise, not much. Other strange shapes you can get by adjusting the tension, you will see them very clearly represented, much as you would expect to see if these patterns were simply combined in the amplitude. And that's pretty much what's happening. We're, we're taking the shape of this right here, this operator. We're not actually listening to it. We're not listening to this sound. We're simply using the shape to impress a different um, amplitude pattern onto our first initial sine wave. So the sine wave is always the sound we hear, the volume of which is only determined by our second operator. Is that confusing? Shouldn't be. It's, um, it's pretty easy to see right here in front of our eyes. Now, FM is an entirely different animal here. FM synthesis is about changing the pitch according to one of our operators here. And it's not so difficult to understand, but it's a, it's a bit more difficult to visualize. And uh, the only way I can really think about doing this is just to play it a few times here. We'll work, in, we'll work with another C. This will be a frequency modulated sine wave. 
we're going to go full full modulation but the sine wave that I'm using to modulate is in fact um, let's see it's only one two hundredth of the speed sorry that's a it's difficult so if our if our initial frequency was 660 Hertz as a C our uh, modulator frequency would be 3 Hertz okay so we should see a difference uh, pretty apparently and we can hear a difference now when we look up close you really can't see the difference only at certain only at certain levels can you really see the difference and this is a just sort of a bad frequency here it's not it's not easy enough to see so I'll speed this up to one twentieth um, of our initial speed and here we go now now you can hear that when we look up close we'll see that it still remains a sine wave all the way throughout it just has different frequency um, sort of uh, ups and downs through it you have high pitch zones and you have very low pitch zones All right. now if you remember the way if you remember the shape that our ring modulation uh, produced having these uh, sort of ups and downs throughout they would exactly match up in timing with with this uh, sort of shape right here and the way it, the way it actually works here um, it's a bit difficult to visualize but um, if I draw an envelope across it it our um, our secondary operator which is our modulator here is going to look a lot like this sort of just tracing a sine wave at roughly this tempo roughly this position now I know it, it looks a bit confusing because what I'm um, you'd expect you would expect to find that um, when the frequency or when the modulator is high the high pitch zone would come out and when the modulator was low the low pitch zone would come out that would indeed make more sense but unfortunately it doesn't happen that way FM synthesis relies on the value of the slope okay it does not care about the actual position of this waveform and I can prove it to you watch if we just eliminate all this and we'll record we'll record a triangle let me fix my tension here we'll record a triangle wave sounds like this okay if it were if it were based on the how do I say it if it were based on the position of the wave we would get very smooth ups and downs but instead we get very um, strictly alternating bands okay one you see that uh, what's happening is one uh, zoom in you have one position when it's moving downward and the slope changes and you have another position when it's moving up and the slope affects the frequency okay that is the way FM synthesis works okay um, another example is if we go into the square if we go into a square zone or even a sawtooth if we do it with a sawtooth it produces no modulation why the reason is because the slope is consistently downward see it does not care about the actual value it cares about the slope it cares more about the shape which is why uh, you'll typically see very bizarre and strange looking operators when when people are producing uh, FM synthesis you'll get something that's just completely off the wall really hard to reproduce hard to imagine and it produces all kinds of varying degrees of uh, different sound effects and so on so that's almost impossible to predict but when we look up close yeah you can sure see that our modifier is impressed upon our frequency of the sine wave and only only in a few spots does our initial sine wave actually come out all right well that was a mess of a noise um, I didn't care for that one at all but it was just a good example of how these operate on each other this frequency multiplier will give you a um, frequency which is based on um, whatever key you hit on the keyboard basically um, I'll have to do another chapter on this because I'm out of time. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have a better insight onto how Citrus works and FM synthesis in general. This is Ace Pinkter out.